Hello and welcome to the first of an occasional series here on Rail Story, looking at Victorian locomotives from the later 19th century. With the announcement from Locomotion Models that they are producing a 4mm scale model of an London and North Western Railway improved precedent class locomotive, what better way than to kick things off with taking a look at the doyen of them all, the record-breaking Hardwick. Hardwick is the sole survivor of a class of 160 locomotives which were all built by Francis William Webb at the crew works of the London and North Western Railway between 1887 and 1897. These locomotives were officially rebuilds or renewals of earlier locomotives, keeping the names and numbers of those earlier machines but little else. This was a massive tax dodge, as these rebuilt locomotives could be charged against the revenue account rather than the capital account, and it certainly kept the company accountants very happy. Hardwick had originally been built at Crewe in 1873 and underwent this renewal process, and whenever I see that all I can think of is Logan's Run, with only her name and number remaining in 1892, emerging in April of that year as a brand new improved precedent. Nicknamed Jumbos from their size, today Hardwick looks like a toy alongside giant locomotives from the 20th century, but in her day was a big engine, with 6 foot 9 inch driving wheels, a 150 psi boiler and 17 by 24 inch cylinders. Hardwick shot to fame in 1895 when she took a starring role in the Race to the North. In Britain there was a fierce rivalry between the West Coast and East Coast main line from London to Scotland. The West Coast main line was the older, the first link from London to a point midway on the old Liverpool and Manchester Railway via Birmingham opening in 1838. By comparison, the East Coast route was a brash new interloper with King's Cross Station in London only opening in 1852. Both mainline routes were operated by a consortium of companies. On the West Coast, by the mighty London and North Western Railway from London Euston to Carlisle, where the lovely blue locomotives of the Caledonian Railway took over for the final slog up to Aberdeen. Engines were changed at Crewe, Carlisle and Perth. On the East Coast, trains from King's Cross to York were hauled by the Great Northern Railway. At York, trains were handed over to the Geordie Boys, the North Eastern Railway, and for the final stretch into Edinburgh or Aberdeen, engines were changed again at Newcastle and the train taken on by the North British Railway. Passengers travelling north didn't leave their carriages, of course, it was only the engines and crews which were changed en route. The race to the north of 1895 grew out of this fierce rivalry, which had first flared in the summer of 1888. There had been a period of uneasy peace between whether the east or west coast could get their trains to Scotland the quickest. A gentleman's agreement had been reached that both east and west coast trains should get their trains to Scotland in eight and a half hours. The 8pm train from King's Cross to Aberdeen being scheduled to arrive at 7.35am, and the 8pm from Euston to arrive at Aberdeen at 7.50am. But in June 1895, the West Coast Party caused a sensation by knocking 10 minutes off their arrival time at Aberdeen. Then, on the 1st of July 1895, the gloves really came off when the West Coast people got their train into Aberdeen at 7.20am, knocking half an hour off their schedule and getting in before the East Coast. On the 15th of July, the West Coast caused a sensation by knocking yet another 20 minutes from their timetable, announcing their train to Aberdeen would arrive at 7am. Hauling part of this train was Hardwick. Hardwick, like most Victorian locomotives, was single manned with a set crew of a driver and fireman. But locomotives which were used day in and day out on Toplink Express trains, as Hardwick was, were double manned. Her most famous crew were driver Big Ben Robinson, a tall, broad, bearded man, the epitome of the Victorian engine driver. His father had been a driver on the old Manchester and Birmingham Railway, based at Longsight in Manchester, and had a career spanning 48 years. 
Big Ben Robinson's career on the LNWR lasted for 52 years before his untimely death in December 1907. Big Ben's other claims to fame included working the first non-stop train between Houston and Carlisle on the LNWR, and he also went to the United States with Webb's special compound locomotive Queen Empress in 1893 to take part in the World's Fair at Chicago. He was certainly the right man for breaking a record. Joining him on Hardwick's footplate was his fireman, the dapper young man W. Wollstonecroft. On the night of the 15th and 16th of July, Robinson, Wollstonecroft and Hardwick covered the 141 miles from Crewe to Carlisle non-stop in 163 minutes, arriving at Carlisle 12 minutes early. In fact, the train arrived at Aberdeen at 6.47am, 13 minutes ahead of schedule. This obviously caused consternation in the boardrooms of the East Coast companies and with the build-up to the glorious 12th of August when most of London and the home counties departed London for Scotland the race was really on with timings for arrival at Aberdeen getting ever quicker the West Coast partners getting their train in on the penultimate night of the race at 5.35am all through the summer, the public were following the race north with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. Then, on 22nd of August, the race reached its climax. Hardwick, with Robinson and Wollstonecroft on the footplate, setting a record time for the journey from Crewe to Carlisle, which would stand into the 20th century. The West Coast train had departed Euston on time at 8pm making an average speed of 64 miles an hour start to stop between Euston and Crewe. Today, 64 miles an hour is not fast, but in the 1890s an LNWR express train jogged along about 45, so this was very, very fast running indeed for the LNWR. Taking on the train from Crewe, Ben Robinson worked Hardwick flat out, she covered the 51 miles between Crewe and Preston in 46 minutes, averaging over a mile a minute. Broaching the steep summit at Shap, Hardwick really flew, hitting speeds above 74 miles an hour as she raced towards Carlisle, where the Caledonian boys would take on the train to Aberdeen. Her average speed was an impressive 67.2 miles an hour. Having stood on Hardwick's footplate, I don't think I would have liked to have been on board it at that speed. The 540 miles between London, Euston and Aberdeen were covered in a phenomenal 512 minutes. The train coming to stand at Aberdeen at 4.32am. The average speed of 63.3 miles an hour for the London Aberdeen run was a British record and one which was to last for nearly 40 years. Whilst so many of her sitters were scrapped, thanks to her role in the Race of the North, Hardwick was saved for posterity in 1932, when she was finally withdrawn from service by the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. Hardwick was restored to steam in 1976 and worked a few mainline excursions and took a major role at Rocket 150 at Bold Colliery in 1980. She is now on static display at the National Railway Museum in Shildon. So that's been a quick look at the record-breaking Hardwick. Which Victorian locomotives would you like to see covered by this channel? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you have enjoyed this video and have enjoyed something a little bit different. And if you have, please show your appreciation by liking, sharing and subscribing. See you all next time on Rail Story.